Welcome back. We'll continue with our news review this morning. And just before the break, we were talking about uh, NASA's headache, or rather perceived headache, uh, in picking a presidential flag bearer. And we do understand they're going to use consensus, and we only have to wait until they're done. Now let's move on, uh, cross over to the, the Jubilee side, uh, which is also having a headache, or rather a problem of their own in terms of nomination. And uh, that story is captured on the front page of, uh, rather highlighted on the front page of the Daily Nation. Uhuru Party faces crisis over poll card. The main story is on page five. Smart cards giving Jubilee headache. The party is under pressure from its members and aspirants to abandon the card. Now, it should be noted that already the party has received uh, 140 million shillings from the sale of these cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The card cost about 20 shillings and is the size of an ATM card. Members were required to send an SMS to a number to activate the card or do it manually. Now, during nominations, the barcode would be scanned to ascertain authenticity of membership of the card. Now, that was a plan for party <laughs> nominations. Now, the party secretariat, uh, led by Rafael Tuju, now says uh, they could just abandon those cards and uh, they're leaving it to the National Elections Board that uh, they are still in the process of, of constituting. Um, we do have a member of the Jubilee Party with us, uh, mm -hmm. Isaac Mwaw. What exactly is the problem? Yeah, uh, I think uh, let me first say that uh, the the many Jubilee aspirants who had bought the card are rather disappointed a lot because um, initially people expected that uh, they've card and they invested. You know, 20 bob is not little mm. money, even for the common one, ain't you? If you buy so many cards so that it will help your supporters to vote because you know you want to show the right cost, that is why we have 140 million that have been collected. And so to all of a sudden say that then you cannot use those cards, really, you know, I mean, I mean uh, aspirants are not happy. And um, yes, it's true, members may not, be, may, may not self-mobilize, but as long as you are able to register to be a Jubilee member using your phone and it was a free SMS, 30553, then the Jubilee card was seen as a way of deterring people mm -hmm. from uh, starting ballots and, 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 and causing chaos during the, 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 the nominations. And it was a kind of a sure way but then it will be tamper-proof because then you are dealing with these issues electronically <coughs> and then you can verify how many people. Mm -hmm. However, what happened is that some people went and uh, registered other people. You know, Kenyans are very uh, crafty. And uh, so uh, you, you register so many people, you take the ID numbers and then you have the card. So I, I don't know how they would have circumvented that. The other challenge that also arose is that in regions where Jubilee I, I, I party is a stronghold a party, like in Mount Kenya region like Rift Valley, and other places that are, are being decoded to join uh, Jubilee, how do you tell a Kenyan who has a right to vote their candidates that you will not vote because you don't have a card? Mm -hmm. You see? And it is a right to vote. You know, you'll also end up yourself uh, having a lot of lawsuits. But this is a party and nomination. It's yeah. not really... No, it is. It is. And also everybody has a right, mm -hmm. Fred, to participate in party nominations. So then the idea is not if you are a member of that party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but, but you see membership, mm -hmm. honestly. Can, can we be honest here about political parties and memberships? What I'm trying to say is, mm -hmm. <coughs> political parties, essentially in Africa, generally they have supporters. Mm -hmm. uh, membership is a question is, 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 is a question of you know registering. It's, it's a for, it's a formal legal process. Yes, is but that, according that's, to that's the, the according to the according to yeah, the that, that was the initial that was the initial uh, you know desire of the party. But the truth of the matter is that it it is wrought with a lot of technicalities. And so therefore, so that you do not disenfranchise your, your vote base, so that also you don't end up with people who were able to buy cards, and so therefore they have money, and so therefore they end up controlling the numbers, but it's a game of numbers, you want to have a free and fair process. What, what I would want to imagine is a situation where you use the IABC register. No. no. And then is, when, is, you, when, when, when you use the IABC register, mm -hmm. Uh, you allow members to say, I am a voter in this, in this, in this, in this, in this region, I support the Jubilee Party, I was, I was not able to afford the card, but I have a candidate of choice that I want to vote for. And this is actually mm -hmm. where uh, all political parties are, 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 have, uh, there is a consensus across all political parties when you ask questions about the, their membership register, because the, 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 the reality of it is that uh, when it comes to party nomination, that's why they're called party nomination, what should be used is the membership list. Yes. Because uh, you should not have a situation whereby somebody is a member of <laughs> uh, TNA, of uh, ODM, of uh, all the other NACEN, all the other parties participating in a nomination of another party because mm -hmm. if you if, uh, if what should be happening is that uh, all members of all political parties should actually have their registers ready. 
they should not use the IEBC My understanding register. is that each party and or coalition has already presented their nomination uh, their those membership are list. Those are see, their membership you list. see, under, under the current uh, legal regime, we look at the election laws amendment act. You can only participate in a political party's primary if you are on the register mm -hmm. of a political oh. party. And that's why there is a requirement now for submission of a party membership Which register have already to done. IEBC. No, so they haven't. if any aspirant can demonstrate that a person not being a member of a political party participated and voted in a nomination, that in itself is the ground enough to nullify that nomination. That nomination. Mm -hmm. So that actually is the potential minefield uh, uh, with this nomination process. Uh, and I think that is why parties are grappling, yes. especially those that have not uh, had a, a, a proper register. Yes. And the, the disadvantage that parties are suffering is uh, where you have members registering with the different political parties. Mm -hmm. uh, don't assume that uh, the exposure that is coming out of the register of political parties is that people are actually fraudulently registered in mm -hmm. different political parties. In many cases, actually, people register with a different aspirant for a different political party. When another one comes, they register, not knowing that this information is going to end up in a single database yes. at the use of political parties. So the question of first cleaning up the register for political parties, and unless that law is amended, we are going to have the most mm -hmm. chaotic nominations because most of them will be nullified either by the tribunal or, yes. or, or, or the high court. When, when Do you on the ground that people not being members of a political party yes. uh, participated in the election? The when second, came up with the this second question of this smart card, mm -hmm. and I think the was trying to ensure that their nominations are above board, that uh, only people who are certified as members and they are holding that card, that they are cheap, mm -hmm. will verify with the digital information, could then be able one to ascertain that yes. a specific number only turned up to vote. And it is something and I'm and assuming and even and you would and have loved to and have and on and, and that this was the aggregate. We used a digital system for the different affiliate parties. Uh, uh, people have been registering using form mm -hmm. as a way of uh, constituting a register of the parties. Mm -hmm. And even when you look at the NASA nomination rules, in areas where we intended to have joint nominations, there was a requirement that each of the affiliate parties will submit the amendment you register to the coalition mm -hmm. uh, uh, elections board. And that was to ensure that only people who are registered members of a political party register. But I think where the fault lines have come in, and which uh, my friend Waura has alluded to, is the fraud that was brought into the process by aspirants, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, circumvented the process, polluted it to an extent that the party is now faced with a situation where one either in exclusive regions you have only one person who has because those because cards yeah. and which makes the nomination exercise mm -hmm. uh, 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 an exercise in fertility and so they are grappling with a way of ensuring that there is at least a level playing field so it may appear uh, on the face value that the party has defrauded its members but the truth of the matter is that actual aspirants have placed the party in a difficult situation by compromising the system that the party had intended. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was predicated also <coughs> on getting IEBC to conduct their nomination. No, IEBC and, and, out the and, and once that fell apart, they are putting in place uh, an elections board uh, just a few days to, to the nominations with the people who have no experience in managing nominations or, or, or elections for that matter. So there is a headache there and I think the biggest promise by Jubilee was that the party primaries were going to be very well structured mm. and fair. Now with them dropping uh, this uh, card, I'm, and I'm not sure. saying they will not offer 100% support to that process, do you really think that process I think will for me, the, the most, the, 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 for me, the one thing I would want to, to see happen is our democratic institution, one of them being the IEBC, is that you should be very firm and ensure that um, uh, uh, no political party conduct their primary using the IEBC voter register because the voter register is uh, f the universal yes. uh, the one that facilitates the universal suffering now the the the, the if political parties use the IEBC register to conduct their nomination, it will mean, you actually directly meaning that everybody who is registered there as a voter is a member of your party. And that actually uh, lays ground for um, uh, 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 as in an illegality. So IEBC should be very firm and they should communicate that very clearly. Now, 
of course there are realities uh, as Maura has pointed out that you have situations where by people are supporters of a political party mm -hmm. but they have not registered yes. to be members of that party how do you deal with that issue and that is why you formed yourself as a political party so let everybody put their house in order and, and mobilize, and mobilize well. uh, uh, but uh, now well, with the situation as it is mm -hmm. uh, IBC says uh, they will not uh, uh, take full charge of uh, the Jubilee party party primaries and that was one of the guarantees to aspirants that mm -hmm. IBC will take care of this process mm -hmm. now uh, you're facing a situation where you might have to do away with these smart cards are you still guaranteed of a free and fair nomination process in Jubilee well you know when my friend uh, uh, Vincent was speaking I heard him say universal suffering and uh, it occurred to me that it can actually be universal suffering when South you have every uh, no 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 yes I know I know but, yeah, it's the flower of the star, but it actually can mean that you know it, it yeah, occurred yeah, in my yeah. mind because when you have people using the IBC register mm. to to vote then you don't know which political party they belong to mm. and uh, it is also true based on my experience and I want to Kenyans to recall the Kasarani elections mm. uh, Magaya mm. uh, um, uh, of ODM where also that was an issue who is a delegate who, what, what, you know, those kind of things. Mm. Political parties in this country really have problems. And, and, and it's across the political divide. Mm. It is actually true, as Norman has said, you cannot just cobble up a group of individuals because they are lawyers, they are distinguished, but they have never run an election. And then you say they will have a free and fair process. Mm. Let's say the truth, because it's technical. Mm. Now, what uh, the Jubilee Party has done, it has an MOU. There was a six member committee that was constituted. And uh, the demands have been, you know, you know, uh, um, uh, reduced into an MOU between IBC and, and, and the Jubilee Party. Now, the challenge of the IBC conducting uh, the party primaries for Jubilee is that if they are bungled, then the credibility is lost. Mm -hmm. You see, and that's a very high risk because you don't want to get into an election where even, uh, you know, certain regions are disenfranchised because of some conduct mm -hmm. that others would have been av avoided. Now. Is there expertise to help in conducting uh, uh, party primaries for yes. political parties? Yes. I think yes. Uh, the first thing that we should have done, and I propose it, it, it is just that it did not go through Parliament, is to provide for 0.1% uh, over and above the 0.3% of political parties fund to be given the fifth day of the elections for political parties to conduct general elections. Because one of the reasons why, for example, the, Jubilee primaries. Pass, uh, the primaries uh, Jubilee may have been used is also to raise resources towards uh, financing the, mm -hmm. the, the party, party uh, you know, you know, functions. And, and if you have that, then you distribute it according to the strength of, of, of the political parties as of then. You have also have the, the challenge of political parties, you know, uh, dying just before general elections and other ones <laughs> being raised up. <laughs> so consistently you don't have strong political parties. And the truth of the matter is, even the shift from one political party to another, mm -hmm. we, have, we have a straight jacket law that does not have a, a very well-defined defection window. Mm -hmm. So that as Norman has said, then if you nullify the nominations of individual candidates who may have moved from one party to another, it will be a cross board. Mm -hmm. And it is really rather unfortunate because we are making laws that, does not, that do not reflect our mm -hmm. political culture. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and sometimes you, you, you are left to wonder whether is man made for the law, is law made for the man. But the man and, 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 and then, and then, and then <coughs> Fred, mm -hmm. uh, going forward, when you have a poor, uh, a poor electorate, that uh, cannot really participate fully in, in the affairs of a political party. When you have candidates seeing themselves as nablas mm -hmm. of, of, of such electorate to participate in th their democratic right. When you have a, a very poorly defined regime of election campaign financing, you see, where it is everybody for themselves and God for us all. You have a situation where the, 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 the democratic space is reduced to a few rich. You have a space where political parties do not grow up because maybe is they are... Is that what has happened in Jubilee now? Uh, no, what I'm trying to describe is the whole scenario mm -hmm. of political party culture. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, this is not just beyond... Uh, this is not about these nominations. Mm -hmm. Of course, we will somehow f find a way of moving forward. And I believe we shall have in the best way possible to have free and fair nominations. But as a country... We have a responsibility to but move our democracy forward time, by, by okay, looking at our political party. Because, of time, because mm -hmm. of time, I want us to look at this one more headline, and that's mm -hmm. the last thing we'll do because uh, we, have the, we have to give way to another session as well on Power Breakfast. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask that we move away from the party nominations. I know it is still a hot topic, I'll okay. continue discussing it. But now we have to look at uh, the top story on the Daily Nation <coughs> this morning. No mass action after polls warn security chiefs new government document lists potential violence hotspots across the country and proposes criminalizing refusal to accept election results now that is <laughs> a story i want <laughs> it's on page four <laughs> refusal to accept results an offense <coughs> says interior team state document also points out carving out of political zones as well as calls for mass action by disgruntled politicians a security risk that's understandable but now 
refusal to accept results of an, uh, of, a, of an election, making it an offense? I, I, th I think I've, I've always said that uh, uh, General Ngaiseri has never really come alive with the realities of our new constitutional dispensation. It was the things you see there, uh, actually you look at them and you feel sad. To imagine that a high-ranking government official will sit down and imagine that such things and, and imagine that they can happen in our democracy today is rather unfortunate. But what I can say is, one, the offenses that are election-related are codified in law. So you cannot imagine new offenses and, and say you are going to... to, to, to to, to impose them on Kenyans. Mm. A criminal offense must be predetermined. It must be set out in law with clarity. It must be specific and ingredients must be set out. But most importantly, when you look at that headline, that headline speaks many things. That headline, uh, one, to me, it speaks of, uh, of a regime that is too afraid of what is going to happen at the election. Two, I hoped that they could mop, uh, map out the potential rigging areas rather than the potential hotspots, uh, because also the potential rigging areas are known. Two, refusal and acceptance of result is a tenet of democracy. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you, crim you criminalize refusal, what about acceptance of results? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the law itself contemplates yeah, 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 yeah. that somebody will reject results, and, and that's like why it provides a window that somebody who rejects results will go to, 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 to a court of law. And two, Article 37 of the Constitution also says that somebody can demonstrate and pick it. These are ingredients that are enshrined yes. in our Constitution that, you cannot, just read that you cannot wish away. The last paragraph of that story, uh, th uh, and this is a headline, as right. I'm seeing it, yeah. I, uh, I do not know <laughs> uh, the authenticity of the sources. Police officers will arrest anyone who refuses to accept <coughs> the results of the August general election, calls for mass action or carves out parts of the country as exclusive political zones. Uh, well, the third one we do understand, if you carve out mm -hmm. and say this is exclusively mm -hmm. uh, for party A, uh, which uh, is not really what should happen, but surely police officers arresting anyone who refuses to accept results. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think uh, the, the, our constitution article 10.2, there are 17 national values, one of them is the rule of law. Uh, 38 talks about uh, the right to political right. Everybody has a right to participate and as even uh, 37 uh, Norman has pointed out is the issue of people, the right to demonstrate. So I think uh, for me, let me be, uh, be more positive here and say that I think with the message that is coming out clearly that the, the electoral process is not only a deliverable of the uh, IEBC, also the security apparatus ought to prepare themselves. Mm -hmm. So if this is part of their preparation, I think we should appreciate that. Now, however, uh, the quality of the preparation, if this is the outcome of their preparations, I think then from uh, uh, as observers we should be concerned because uh, when you say that you're criminalizing certain things that are actually um, uh, uh, guaranteed in the constitution, that, that is a challenge. Then uh, as, uh, we pointed out that e since the election offenses are clearly outlined, uh, w what your response should be is to speak to how to deter, detect, and therefore also ensure that um, you proactively uh, suppress any possible of election uh, offenses. Uh, the, the, the final uh, issue is that um, um, the, the reality is that if the election is going to be contested, people will, uh, the, some people might not be happy with it. And uh, as we rightly say that when you have political um, uh, differences, you don't sort them in the streets, you sort them in our courts. That now brings in the, the judiciary, the DPP, mm -hmm. ESCC. What are they doing in this process? So that it is also <coughs> the police themselves are not an end or they are not a law unto themselves. They are facilitators in implementing and facilitating a law and order. So what is the role, what is the role of the judiciary? What is the role of the DPP? What is the role? So that together they can actually paint a message uh, that we will have. A f if you look at um, the, 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 I think, 81, the free, the free and fair election, some of the things that depict a free and fair election is that it should be free from violence, bribery, intimidation, mm -hmm. and all those issues around zoning. So yes. I think what the police or the security apparatus should be doing is really uh, demonstrating what everybody will be doing through this electoral process so that together, because an election is not an event, yes. it is a process. And of course, uh, this is informed by what has happened in the previous elections in 20, uh, 2007 and 2013. And of course, I'm sure the security <laughs> teams are trying to uh, uh, remedy 
some of the problems, uh, provide remedies, possible remedies uh, and potential remedies for some of the potential problems that could come. But surely, is this the way to go? I think, uh, you know, nowadays we read, uh, we read uh, blogs. Eh? Um, um, blogs have a way of saying, you wouldn't believe what uh, you, you so-and-so said. And then when you read, you just find there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I think this may be just a way of selling the headline. Mm -hmm. To be very honest, there's no way you can say you'll arrest. The police have no capacity whatsoever <laughs> to, to, to arrest somebody just because they have refused to accept results. Mm -hmm. Because you can also refuse... So the headline in this sense could be misleading. Misleading because you, it's, you could uh, uh, refuse to accept a friend mm -hmm. in the heart. Just like uh, we, we were in an era where it was treasonable to imagine the death the of the death president. Of president. Yeah. How, do, you know, how do you gauge imagination? So... Uh, this, I think we need to see the real text of the statement from the, from, from the, from the police. Uh, I would want to give uh, on uh, Kaiseri and uh, <coughs> PSK Bicho uh, the benefit of the doubt. I am very certain that that was not the case. We know, for example, that uh, in 2007, the word mass action was used to mobilize, and then it, of course, resorted into violence. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we don't want to have violence. In 2013, God willing, there was no much violence, although there was a lot of, you know, um, a violence, if you like, in the social media. We would want to imagine that um, the situation would obtain that we'll have free and fair elections at, in August, and so therefore there will be no cause for alarm. There will be a clear and outright winner between uh, Jubilee and, 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 and NASA, and that of course, in my opinion, it will be Jubilee, mm -hmm. uh, based on the current uh, ongoings, and that mm -hmm. nobody would have then uh, cause to, to resort into uh, picketing, uh, and demonstrations as is, of course, his or her right as per Article 37, and that, that in, even if it were to happen, there would be no violence. Yeah. We, we saw it uh, in, in, in the U.S. where after Trump won, people, you know, demonstrated, burnt tires for about five or so days or even more, but we would want to imagine that every Kenyan, mm. every Kenyan of goodwill would want to have a, a peaceful election and that nobody should lose their lives because of political contestation. Okay. And, and, and Fred, let me say this. Um, we have given a lot of resources towards uh, security. Mm -hmm. In fact, and indeed, the security budget has increased a lot. We have also uh, made a loss uh, at, the, at the national government CDF. Uh, a lot of uh, money is also towards security at the local level. We would want to imagine that um, the police and other security operators would ensure that they would contribute immensely towards free and fair elections in this country, including mm -hmm. uh, party nominations, that the police will not be misused as okay. to favor certain candidates, and that Kenyans will have their leaders of their choice. Well, because of time, we have to end our news review there. Thank you so much, Bona Isaac Mora, nominated MP, Vincent Kimoso, policy analyst, and Norman Magaya, head of the NASA Secretariat. Of course, other headlines that we could have been looking at. Uh, Uhuru to start Kisi tour in hand for votes. The president and his deputy will today start a two-day tour of the Gusi region. Uh, also, something uh, interesting is that uh, veteran politician Gitobu Manyara is making a comeback into competitive politics. He'll be seeking to recapture the central Menti parliamentary seat on a Mindeleo Chap Chap ticket. That has been our news review this morning. We need to give uh, way for other sessions here in Power Breakfast. Remember, that's the hashtag to use. My name is Fred Nindimuli. Good morning.